Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra. The topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Now, every so often, I like to look at the freaky side of sex and, like, what people are actually doing out there. So, guess what, my little horny devils? That's what this show's about today. I want to talk about uh, different kind of sex acts that are out there that people are doing and then end it off with like different sexual traditions in different countries. And they are quite interesting to say the least. So, let's get this party started. Uh, we are going to start with a pheromone party, or pheromone parties. Uh, this is definitely one of those things that is going on in Miami, Florida. It has its own website. There are actually rules, and the rules are to wear a cotton t-shirt three days straight, then seal it in a plastic bag. Guests take their mock in sealed bags to the party where they are placed on a table. You spend the evening taking whiffs of each other's bags until you find a scent that makes you feel a bit frisky. Then you make contact with the appropriate guest and what happens uh, after that is really up to two, up to the two of you. Uh, interesting way to get laid or to get a date, but it seems to be working. So another freaky act that's going out there sexually is goat say. It's goat s e at the end of that. And it is the act of anal stretching. Yes, anal sex has become quite popular, but this is actually, uh, a way, it's a, you know, a way of going about stretching your anal. Uh, interesting. Uh, it did, it does have its own website that you can look up. And I guess that this individual, Kurt Johnson, made the term popular with his graphic images of just that. Anal stretching. I just feel the pain. I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> uh, but with anal sex becoming quite uh, popular now, that might not be a bad thing to do. Uh, you gotta watch it. It's not just 
being done in the bedroom on this website. Uh, it's funny. It's it's often used by pranksters as a bait and switch link posted on internet comment threads. But it is there. And you go on to it. There's also a blog which you can go on to which is goatsay.cx I don't know if the dot open paren or close paren is part of that but yeah just go on there but it does say when you do click on the link uh, when you click on the link so that your hot can also be warmed you are faced with Mr. Johnson manually stretching his anus. So be aware if you go onto the website, that is the immediate uh, vision or visual effect that you will receive. So be ready. The next one is a lemon party. Now... I guess these, uh, the show 30 Rock and The Simpsons actually have mentioned these. So uh, for you fans out there of those, you probably already know what these are. Well, this lemon party is. Uh, so if you picked up on the contacts, you know, really there you'll know what's going on so this is what this is this term originated from lemonparty.org which is a website and it features a video of three octagonarine looking males getting it on uh it has come to serve as a term for senior citizen multiplayer, multi-partner, sorry, sex romps. It's an orgy. Lovely. Okay. is I don't even want to know. <laughs> it's a senior. So I take it the lemon part is the wrinkled skin. Oh, that one's low. <laughs> ah, moving right along with a pony play. Now this one's uh probably known by a lot of people, but this one first came across uh, as a sex as act, sex act while reading the short story The City Pony. And the book is by Roxy Cat, K-A-T-T, if you want to look it up, in the anthology, Where the Girls Are. Uh, this isn't a, just a fictional fetish. It actually is a fetish. And the way you know that is a sex act is, a sex act is official when it requires gear. And gear we find in abundance. Lovely. Pony play entitles one partner taking on the role of the pony, including, but not limited to, being fed carrots, wearing a saddle, and wearing a tail, which naturally hangs from the end of a butt plug. Uh, the pony is expected to whiny, gallop, and otherwise do other all the other cute things that ponies do. Obviously, plus things that they don't do, because it is sexually generated. So, just think of it that way. Shrimping. I'm afraid to find out. Uh, this is actually one of the top freaky sex acts out there. 
And that, that's actually based on its sheer originality, believe it or not. Um, a Miami police officer actually knew about this. Uh, he discovered shrimping while investigating a sexual battery case. Shrimping involves one male being on the receiving end of a line of males who take turns engaging in anal sex with the first male. Once everyone has made a deposit into the bank of savings and rectum, one lucky guy, usually celebrating his birthday, inserts a PVC pipe into the receptacle's rectum and use it, uses it to Make a withdrawal. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because this police officer said that, you know, they've seen, he's been on the force for 14 years. And he says he has seen a lot of things during that time. But that was completely new. And that he was thankful that the name was dropped in to see how their friend was doing and explain the shrimping phenomenon. So this is being done in uh, Miami, which I'm sure that's not the only place that it is being performed. That one, uh, yeah, that one tops my list. Interesting enough. Another way to celebrate your birthday? Why not? Uh, that is a quietly, extremely, really freaky XX. Uh, ooh, I'm just like, that one caught me. So now, let's continue on. And we're going to move into some fetishes and other surprising sex acts. But you really have to think where and, and how these things become, uh, come to light or where they get these names from for these. It's just unbelievable. But now, some fetishes you know and engage in these fetishes are what they are. They're fetishes. Um, and I just basically learned about one today and just happened to fall upon it reading something else. And I'm probably going to say it wrong, but it's her, her pseudophilia, which is a fetish where people are attracted to hairy underarms or really hairy body parts on people. Um, Hey, why don't you just go into this fetish with stuffed animals and all things furry related? Uh, this is a fetish that it is an attraction to teddy bears. I don't even want to think about that one. Uh, but there is a fetish, which has been brought out of the bedroom, but still a sexual fetish called furries, where uh, adults get dressed up in fur costumes and perform acts of sex. But they do have a lot of uh, conventions now where people go and display their costumes, and it might just you know, that underlining part is where they're looking for mates. Heaven only knows. But, yeah, this is the attraction to teddy bears. And having sex. And this is where, you know, you wear your mask, you wear your costume, and just, like I said, furries. It is... Also, you gotta think about it. The people that engage in the actual sexual 
aspect of that, do they have a tendency to uh, wonder how it would be with a real animal and how far they would go? Ooh, just got a chill. All right, let's go on. A fetish for all things temperature related. Uh, there are people who are attracted to extreme temperatures. And then those who are attracted to extremely cold, they were in which they actually experience sexual excitement from it. And then, you know, if it goes into, you know, if it's brought into the sexual act. Um, whereas it being the sexual act, extremely hot or extremely cold. So, who's to say out in a snowstorm, they're out there getting their groove on. Heaven only knows. Ooh, on that note... It just stumped me. We are going to take our first break of the show. So get that snack, get that drink, come back, get relaxed. And I will meet you back here for more Sex Talk with Andra, where we'll continue our discussion of some freaky sex acts and fetishes and then end the show out with the different countries and their unique sexual acts that they do, which is part of tradition, believe it or not. So go ahead and I'll meet you back here. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships well listen to the golden state media concepts relationship podcast your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Now, I hope you are relaxed as we get back into our topic of some freaky sex acts that are going on. They're out there. Not everybody is doing them, but they are out there. So if you hear something you like, hey, look it up and join in. I'm sure they'll want more um, bodies, if not anuses. So we're going to continue where we left off and then end out with uh, other countries' freaky sexual uh, traditions and what they practice. Also going to talk about some, you know, freaky sex acts, or shall I say, crazy sexual things about women. But we are going to continue on with our freaky sex acts first. Next one we are continuing with is a Stinging sensation. Now, what do you think that means? It's being stung or poked. You don't want to draw blood. 
uh, but the sting or pinch of a sharp object sends sexual electricity through your body. And then generally you'll want to follow through with that, of course. So that little bit of a... Oh, get your juices flowing. Send an electrical shock onto your partner and have some fun. Age play. Hmm. Let's see what that is. <laughs> uh, it's adult women in diaper. So, little freaky. Mm, nah. I mean, adult women in diapers. Uh, eat baby food being fed bo a bottle by another person. Um, if it's a video, doing things like coloring or playing with kids' toys. It is a fetish. Um, supposedly, it does differ from pedophilia. As to what extent? Oh, no. I haven't said anything that doesn't make me think that is that. So, it's basically the same thing. But moving on. Extreme weight gain. You know, this is a weight-related fetish. They like watch... It's when someone likes watching women who are already plus size or possibly obese eat large quantities of food and get sexually turned on by it. Some people go onto YouTube and watch this um, so that they can get turned on by it and get that sexual rush. Uh, they attempt to go into restaurants and watch or wait till that one person comes in and will sit and watch them eat um, obviously it's a turn on for them but uh, they don't perform a masturbation act in public but having that thought process of watching, they go home and then masturbate. So, hey, different strokes are different folks, people. A music-related fetish. Mm, that's not that bad. I can't say that it would be, but... um being extremely aroused by the sound of a woodwind instrument, uh, which would be flutes, clarinets, oboes, and it's that sound that turns you on. That you can go back to Kenny G with, because I'm sure a good amount of women got wet off of that one having he played, so I don't see that as a freaky act, but... There has to be some degree as to what will be done with that instrument. And I think that's when the freaky part comes into play. Uh, you know, there are a lot of fetish, fetishes and freaky sex acts out there, and they are just Adding up and adding up and adding up, adding up. Every, you know, someone's coming up with something almost all the time. So don't feel, you know, that anything is said is anything new or there's nothing that's going to, uh, not become part of a new freaky act. Because it is out there. I think people do this to see if they can just do this in a plain and simple term. So, I, I couldn't even go there. Let's not even say it. 
and moving on with our lovely freaky acts of sex. Yeah, there's some interesting facts regarding freaky sex. Um, it's funny because these are inter- interesting facts that have probably been for- proven. So, first one is nearly 10% of all dreams include sex. Duh. And it's not just in the teen, the hormonal teenager. That usually happens with everybody. They have sexual dreams just about um, celebrities, politicians, anything that who or whoever uh, turns you on, you will have a sex dream. Women get erections too. Yeah, we do. Um, it's sim- it's smaller than the male counterpart. Obviously, it's the clitoris. Uh, there, it, it is. If you go on to uh, Tickle Kitty, the author of t- um, TickleKitty dot com, and the author of Tickle His Pickle, your hands on guide to penis pleasing. <laughs> Um, talks about this. Uh, the clitoris is made up of the same spongy erectile tissue as the penis, which expands and engorges with blood when aroused. You can observe this. Just look at your clitoris or touch it when you're aroused and it will be bigger. That's why a lot of clitoral stimulation, people. It's good. 3% of people have no sexual fantasies. Well, that's a real low number. So, does that make them a freak? Or does it make everybody else who are thinking about sex freaks? Really, it it really depends on how you perceive yourself sexually. And seeing as sex has become a major selling point, a major everything in what we do these days, uh, they must, yeah, I would think that that would be a little lower. <laughs> And it's at the low point as it is of 3%. So, oh my goodness. Um, Because it says that, you know, the vast majority say they fantasize somewhere between several times per week and several times per day. The surprising part is that there are some people who report zero sexual fantasies. And there, there are people out there that are like that. Do I think it's 3%? I think it's a little lower than that, but hey, research tells. A headache may actually make you more in the mood. And there is that cliche, not tonight, dear, I have a headache. Um, but a study was actually found that not all headache sufferers avoid sexual activity. In fact, migraine sufferers reported higher levels of sexual desire. And this was actual research. And then they asked the question as to why it is this way. And the study suggests that um, sexual desire and migraine headaches may be influenced by the same brain chemical. Now, I do know that sex is supposed to be very good for a headache because it opens up all your blood vessels and alleviates it. It's also a turn-on. There you go, especially for migraine sufferers. Although, thinking about that with a migraine sufferer, if you are, you have to 
debilitating migraines. I can't see where you'll be getting up because you probably couldn't get off the couch unless your mate came to you. Uh, I don't know. From what I hear, it's just the continual banging and your brain will be like really screaming at you. But research shows the clitoris is way bigger than you think it is. Yeah, we know that. We just talked about that. Let's see if it actually gives us a length. Um, oh, jeez. The part of the clitoris you can see, there's a much larger part called the clitoral urethral. Uh, vagina complex. Wow. Did they just make the vagina a complicated thing to just enjoy or what? Underneath the skin that also engorges with arousal. Apparently that engorge, that skin gets very aroused. And engorged just as does the clitoris. When a woman is aroused, the vaginal canal also lengthens as the uterus is pulled upward, further upward into the body. The angle often changing as well. Um, not only is this fascinating, but it is one of the reasons that waiting for full arousal means having more pleasurable sex. Sex is better when your body's ready. Which is true. Want an orgasm? Leave your socks on. Keep your feet warm. Um, forget lingerie. If you want to increase your chance of having an orgasm, keep your socks on during sex. Now there was research done on this at one of the universities, but they're not exactly sure why it works. But the theory is that in order to orgasm, you need to be totally relaxed and anxiety-free. True. And cold feet can interfere with the ability to really get into sex. I can see that. And it's mainly in women, but I can see that. So totally can see that. A big penis won't stretch out a, or ruin a vagina. Uh, this is a really popular myth. And it's all over the internet and all of that. Uh, that having too much sex or having sex with a large partner or toy can stretch out a woman's vagina and or labia resulting in Ugly roast beef flats. Okay, what a description. Uh, <laughs> the vaginal ca uh, canal is a muscle and does not permanently stretch from having accommodated a large penis or toy. The vagina is incredibly resilient and bounces back quickly. Also, the shape and size of the labia are unique to each woman and are not indicative of her sexual status or history. So, guys, it doesn't stretch us out. Just saying. But on that note, we are going to take a break here. And when we come back, we will continue with these freaky things. So go get, replenish that drink, replenish that snack, come back in, relax, and I'll meet you back here for more Sex Talk with Andra. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. 
Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am still your host, Andra, with a topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Now, we are continuing on with our freaky, freaky sex acts, some freaky, crazy, you know, fetishes or facts, which is always fun to do, because I'd like to uh, look in and get either a chill up my spine or a good giggle for the night on some things that people like to do. Granted, I am not judging that that is completely your preference, me personally, and probably uh, some other people would not do it. But that is a choice, and a choice, as the saying goes, to each his own. So continuing on with some freaky facts, sex facts, that is, the G-spot exists, except it doesn't. Boy, is that uh, a little disappointing. G spot, the G spot is a misnomer as what we consider the spot isn't a discrete anatomical entity. Well, no one said that it was, but instead it is an area of the urethral sponge that is highly sensitive for many people. But bodies in arousal are complex, and there's no surefire technique or even erogenous zone that works for everybody. So basically, we consider our G-spot a place right then and there, which is like an awesome orgasm. But it is not the same for everybody, every woman, or whatever it is. It's not the same, but it works for you, so play it. That is your G-spot. But the next woman has a different G-spot. So you can't say, uh, it's right there. There isn't any place on our bodies that actually is the G-spot. It's just the spot that you hit that is so sexually arousing that we have an uh, an ultimate orgasm. As simple as that. We're talking about sex more about having it less. Ooh, I don't think that's true. But let's get into it. Uh, sex is mentioned in the media more than ever before, but that's not translating to more sex times. No kidding. They're just talking about sex. No one said that they were talking about anything else. Uh, there are, like, they did this little bit of research, there's a few statistics here. 
uh, Americans in relationships reported having sex 16 fewer times per year. And this was between the years 2010 to 2014. Tell the babies that and the baby boom. Uh, so, and they're actually going backwards with this because it, uh, they found that, uh, individuals in between the years of 2002, 2004 already having sex about nine fewer times per year in 2010 to 2014. Hey, it could have been a bad, you know, little bit in time. So there are those. Uh, they don't think it as much, and that might just be the fact that they're with a partner, they're comfortable with their partner in everyday sex. Doesn't nat- naturally, um, necessarily not exist, but just a little bit more at a pace. How's that sound? Uh, With less sex and less happiness, it's no wonder that American adults seem deeply dissatisfied these days. I don't think they are. But okay, this has got to be a little old. (laughs) Um, The average person's sexual peak is the same age they can rent a car. Uh, That's a correlation, but not a causation. Uh, but it study does say that the average American will have the most sex around age 25. Um, they found that people in their 20s have sex more than 80 times per year, declining to 60 times per year. Uh, by age 45, and then 20 times, and it goes down, 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 down. Again, this is kind of old, so I really don't think that that, today's society, I think sex is picking back up. So, when it comes to pleasure, penis girth is more important than length. I don't know, is it? Many men like to compare the length of their penises. Yes, they do. But the only people who really care about that number are other men. And that is so true. Women don't care. Yeah, women don't care. The vagina mainly is covered in stretch mechanical receptors, which means that girth or with is more important aspect of the penis for women. So the thicker you are, the better you are. But if you got both length and thickness, you are batting a hundred. The only thing fancy condoms turn on is your credit card. Um well, there are more marketing that is for sex magic. The vi- you know, come on, ribbed for her pleasure. They're all, the- yeah, and that's a campaign for condoms. Everybody knows that one. Uh, the vagina is relatively insensitive to pain and stimulation. So, believe it or not, they give an example. That surgeries can be done on the vagina without anesthetics. They got to get to it first, and that's gonna hurt. Ah, uh, so con the condoms will all, with all the little bumps, ticklers, and ridges, don't even make a dent. So you really. It's got to be really pronounced in order to feel it. 
I would think, and I think it would only be felt as the penis is being entered into the vagina. So, more thrusting does not equal more fun. You know, we get this a lot from uh, porn, but then there are those partners who like to literally thrust really hard at times and just have some fun with that, but that actually can cause pain and injury, so remember that. Uh, the most commonplace women experience pain during sex is in the vulva vestibule, just under the opening to the vagina. This is where the thin skin stretches underneath the opening. That is very vulnerable to abrasion and tearing, so if you're whacking away down there, and banging it hard, you're actually causing damage. It's as simple as that. Um, technically, this is why women do not benefit from prolonged pounding, which just drags the penis repeatedly across the area, creating painful friction fairly quickly. So remember that. It does make it uncomfortable. So think about that before you're going to go on a ponding fest with your partner. If you both want to, hey, then go for it. Just no one use is not walking pretty good the next day. Men can orgasm without ejaculating. Orgasm and gel uh, ejaculation are two distinct physi physiological responses in men. Uh, while ejaculation generally does coincide with an orgasm, the two actually occur in rapid succession with orgasm coming slightly before ejaculation and then tapering off during ejaculation, so. Uh, there is a way in which you can learn to differentiate between the two to have an orgasm without ejaculation, but that is going to take a lot of masturbation to figure out. Do you have the time for that? Well, then again, we are stuck in the house from... COVID, and I know quarantine is going to be coming up again pretty soon when the kiddies go back to school. But for now, keep that as a thought. Want to do better at work? Have more sex at home. Duh. -uh. When you're getting satisfied at home, you're going to be happy to go to work. And work goes by fast. Uh, having sex might get you your next promotion. So, and this isn't the sleeping with the boss type. It turns out that having a happy sex life was linked with improved job satisfaction and greater engagement at work, both of which can help advance your career. Oh, that's nice. If I have more sex, then go to work. Bring home the bacon. Go ahead. Men suffer from low libido as much as women do. Did I just hurt your feeling, all those males out there? Men are always up for sex, anytime, anywhere, and with anyone. Not only is this a myth, and not true, but it also, it's also incredibly damaging to both men and women. So, the fact that the number of couples complaining of low sexual desire in the male partner is about equal. Uh, couples need to accept that it is perfectly normal to have mis mismatch desires and to work out both sexual frequency and ways to 
initiating sex that works for them. So you really got to work at it. And it's going to be something that you work out for you and your partner so you have fun. Orgasms, use it or lose it. This is really scary. It's rare, but it's possible to lose your sexual sensation. Not a non-knowable fact, but okay. If you go for long periods without sex, this happens. Uh, there is a medical condition known as clitoral atri- atrophy, which occurs when the clitoris doesn't receive enough blood flow, causing it to retract into the body. Now, penile atrophy can also occur, although it's less likely to do with lack of sex and more often caused by aging or injury. So guys have it a little easier than us, but nevertheless, they do get it. Fantasies really get acted out in real life. Uh, Yeah, there are a lot of people out there that are content to keep, you know, their sexual fantasies as restricted or imaginary. And they generally will not act it out. But it is there. I can't say much more than that. They would rather just do it privately. They're not generally acted out because most couples now are very comfortable with what their sex life is. And that is very nice. So this is my last break in the show. So, totally up to you if you want to get some more drink and snack. But do get relaxed and meet me back here for more sex talk with Andra as we finish out the show with a few more freaky sex uh, facts and then some sexual traditions from other countries. Quite interesting. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, with a topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Now, this is the last segment of the show, so I hope you are comfortable, because we're going to get right into it. And as promised, we're going to finish out some more of these freaky sex things, effects, sex facts, shall I say, and then finish out with some sexual traditions being conducted all over the world. And they're quite interesting. So, vibrators 
were first developed as a medical device. This is not an unknown fact. Um, it was invented in 1869. They actually used it for the treatment of hysteria or mysterious female disorders. Obviously, they didn't know or didn't want to know that women orgasmed, orgasmed. So they give them this to pleasure themselves. Uh, whenever a woman reported being mentally or emotionally upset, uh, it was considered an illness, and the cure was using a large steam-powered massager to massage the genitals with the goal of inducing hysteria, 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 Oy vey, it's getting late. Uh, paro, uh, paroxysm. Nope. Paroxysm. New word. Um, and that was the Victorian term for orgasm, obviously. Uh, and it was supposed to make the ladies feel better. Well, of course, they're masturbating and getting themselves off. They're not sick. It's a normal response to the body. Ah. Uh, 75% of women don't orgasm from regular sex. Well, that's not stupid. And that's not weird. It's probably true. Um, a lot of people get nervous. They think something's wrong when uh, a woman cannot orgasm during normal sex, penis and vagina. You know, the normal you stick your winky in my hole. Uh, but not only is that totally normal, but it is also true for va the vast majority of women. So, three quarters of women need direct clitoral stimulation, either from a hand, a toy, or special position to orgasm. So, think about that, which I think you already are. The egg chooses the winning sperm. Okay, procreation. Uh, a lot of people imagine conception as a race to the egg when the fastest sperm wins and gets to pass on its genes to the baby-to-be. This is one of those sex facts. Uh, definitely forget it. It's just... Forget it. Uh, this is uh, bias with, biased with our cultural lens about men being competitive. Uh, with like violent words of drilling, burrowing, and penetrating. The egg, while the egg, the woman sits around passively. No. So. It's all this macho thing going on right in there. You can feel the testosterone in that particular fact. So, breakup sex isn't always a bad idea. Well, it isn't. Now, hooking up with your ex uh, is a terrible idea, but it isn't. Um, Breakout sex does not interfere with the process of ending the relationship, but it may help the process of moving on. It turns out that in some cases, breakup sex may be exactly the closure you need. And that is true. That's why a lot of you go back and you'll go to bed with your prior partner. Just because you've completed intercourse doesn't mean you've had sex. Uh, when it comes to a successful sexual experience, you know what a home run is, but do you know all four bases in that? 
Uh, now, this is how they explain it. If you can hit all the bases before heading for the home run, there you go. The bases are the four F's. French, kissing, feeling, fingering. The last F in that, you can just imagine what it is. I don't think I have to tell you. So let your mind wander a little there. And get creative, but it all comes back to the same word. Uh, can't say that on podcast view. Just because you've completed intercourse doesn't mean you've had sex. That's all it is. So I repeated it. So you gotta get past all those bases, dear. All the bases. The celebrity bucket list isn't as common as you think. Uh, air, you know, ideas of having a celebrity sex list, which was brought up on one TV show. The idea that each project partner can keep a list of famous people they've allowed to have sex with if the situation ever presented itself without it being cheating. But it turns out that celebs don't actually fuel, fuel very many fantasies. I don't agree with this because there are a lot of people out there that do fantasize about celebrities, regardless to whom they're with. So there are ser- several of these crazy facts out there, and uh, you can look them up. But I'm going to move on. So, to some other crazy facts that are just sitting there waiting to be told. And these are for, like, sex, fa- crazy sex facts, sex facts for the modern woman that that'll fantasize and educate you, actually. There are a lot of them. And I will not be going through all of them. So, just remember that. So, starting our list off. One is, we automatically perceive people who smell good as more attractive. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Usually women will have a scent that they love on a man. And probably they actually follow their mate that way. Um, but they can smell it. It, it could be in a crowded room, but they're going to smell it. Uh, ginger stimulates the feelings of excitement associated with sex. Eating ginger alleviates your heart rate. Elevate your heart rate, sorry. And get your blood flowing and get you excited for the night ahead. Ginger has a lot of good properties to it. Um, the n- next one actually is geared towards the man. And, oh, she puts creepers. I got an ad. And we can't be doing that. You know that. So, continuing on. uh, There was a study that found men feel more emotional pain after a breakup than women do. That's probably true. They need to feel what we're feeling anyway. So, uh. Another study showed that men and women cannot be just friends. I disagree with this because you can have that and the male 
has this protective role, like a brother sister relationship. So I can't agree with that. Uh, is it more times than none that if a guy is hanging out with you, they are thinking of sex? Absolutely. So, some people consider sperm to be an in, in, anti-aging treatment and ugh, as it has a tightening effect on the skin. It's called, it's drying, wash it off. Sleep deprived men are more likely to believe women want to have sex with them. That is so freaking true. I, I'm most positive. People who are into kinkier sex may be psychologically healthier. That is quite true. Because you're able to think out those fantasies, play out those fantasies, so your psyche is being addressed on all those feelings. Endorphins released during sexual activity create euphoria similar to opiate use. That is quite true. So you don't need to take drugs. You have normal ones. Some people experience the same feeling of arousal when thinking about food as when thinking about sex. True, they're probably imagining what their partner is going to do with that food on them. 10. After ovulation, ovulation, shall I say, a female's egg is fertile for 24 to 48 hours, and a man's sperm can live 48 hours inside the female body. Do the math. There you go. Just make sure you're taking uh, precautions if you do not want little tiny ewes running around. In the UK, 90% of adults admitted to having some form of sexual interaction. There are a lot of these. Look them up. They are quite interesting. So remember that. And I am, as promised, going to end out the show with... Uh, some freaky sexual traditions in other uh, countries and they are quite interesting I'm assured somewhere something something similar is being done and these are from all over the world the first one is boys and girls of the Samian uh, tribe have to drink semen. This is uh, a tribe of New Guinea. They have a tradition of separating their boys from the girls at the age of seven for ten years. During this period, they undergo piercings, nosebleeds, and have to drink the semen of the tribe's mightiest warrior. Ooh, scary. Another freaky sex act from another country. And a lot of this is within tribes, believe it or not. Girls of the Trobrander tribe engage in sexual acts from age of six. They're not like here, but that would be statutory rape or whatever it is uh, in some cases. The uh, tribe from Papu, New Guinea, uh, embrace sexuality from an astonishing young age. Boys start engaging in sexual activity from the age of 10 to 12, while the girls start at, start from six, eight, uh, six years. Another interesting fact in country would be that of Mangi, Mangia. Older women have sex with young boys. Uh, This is an island in the South Pacific Ocean. Boys around the age of 13 have sex with older women who teach them the 
intricacies of the act and how best to please their partner. In a way that's good, in a way it's bad. In rural Austria, women feed armpit flavored apples to their suitor, which fits into the fetish to some extent, but this is something that is going on. And the whole thing is, is that uh, young women do a ritual dance with apple slices stuffed in their armpit. After the dance, each gives her slice to the man of her choice, and he then eats it. So, the Krug, Krug, probably saying that wrong, tribe builds love huts where teenage girls can have sex with different men till they find the one. Now this is this tribe's in Cambodia. The elders build the love shack for their teenage daughters. Different boys spend the night there day after day until she finds a suitable partner who is then with her for life. Well, there is a happy ending in that one. Getting there is the issue. I am assured. In ancient Greece, men took young boys as lovers. Uh, you know, for the ancient Greeks, Greeks, sexual identity didn't even depend on a gender or a preference, but on who was the active penetrator and who was the penetrate penetrate T. So um, the active role was associated with higher social status, while the passive role meant youth and feminine, or boy loves in other words. So boy love. Which is pornography here. Uh in certain Nepali tribes, brothers share one woman. They do this. This is in the Himalayas. Uh, they practice polyandry. And the brothers share one woman so that they don't have too many children for their limited farmland. I don't think that makes any difference, but hey. Uh... A Wadabi tribe holds a wife-stealing festival every year. Uh, this tribe is in Niger, in West Africa, and the children are married in their infancy. However, at uh, the yearly Gruol festival, Wadabi men wear elaborate makeup and costumes and try to covertly steal another's wife. If they go undetected, their union becomes recognized. Public, <laughs> this one's quite interesting. Public masturbation ceremonies were held in ancient Egypt. Uh, they were obsessed with masturbation. They believed that ebb and flow of the Nile was caused by their god of creation's ejaculation. Thus, the world um, the would ritually masturbate in the Nile to ensure a wealth of water for crops. During the uh, ritual or the festival of the god Min, who represents the pharaoh's sexual power, men regularly masturbate in public. That's not to say that that goes on... In your respective areas. This is actually something expected. Of a culture. So remember that. In Indonesia. You can have sex outside of marriage. During pawn celebration. Now during the celebration. Participants have to spend the night. And have intercourse with someone. Other than their wife or husband. It is said that their wishes of good luck will only come true if they have sex with the same person at all seven celebrations throughout the year. So they have to maintain that partner who is not their wife 
or their husband, but they have to maintain it through the the festival. Adolescence of the Muria tribe, Chat Chatiska. Ooh, these are some new words for me. Uh, can practice sex without emotional attachment. Uh, they are very sexually liberated culture. They have mixed sex dormitories where adolescents are sent to practice premarital sex. Sometimes with a single partner, sometimes with serial, uh, sometimes serial, I mean with different partners. Uh, they are discouraged from becoming emotionally attached to the partner. Okay then. In Innes, BA, near Ireland, people make love with their underwear on. I thought this one was kind of cute. The people of uh, this area in Ireland, off the coast of Ireland, are so sexually repressed that they keep their underwear on even during sexual intercourse. How are you going to re-procreate? I don't know. Women of the Gajaro tribe must make a man fall to make love. Cambodia's, 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 oh my goodness. Gajaro people have a ceremonial dance. If a woman trips a man during the dance, they must have sex. So those are some freaky sexual things that are practiced in other countries. I'm assured somewhere in here, some other freaky, uh, sexual act is being performed, but this, these are through tradition. So this shows whether the countries are much more sexually active and the like. So this is the end of my show. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I also would love for you to subscribe to the show and write a good review. It is good not only for me, but for those at GSMC network podcast network also to reach out on facebook twitter and instagram we are there if you want to talk about a discussion on here uh please send it there and hopefully gets you know we will look into it and see what we can do Uh, it's always good to know what you're thinking or what you want to hear so as I, you know, bid my adieu, have a nice night, and thank you again for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network, and good night. Also, as always, almost forgot, please do practice safe sex, if not for your partner, for yourself, and vice versa. So, now it is a good night to all sleep well, or if you're still awake and have things to do, go get them done. Bye-bye for now. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. 
work from sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast.